Tonight on Y News. Later, Representative Martin Romualdez withdraws from the speakership race. President Rodrigo Duterte says he will educate Filipinos on the West Philippine Sea Maritime Dispute at his upcoming Fourth State of the Nation address. 19 fishermen from Zambales and Palawan allegedly disowned the writ of Kalikasan petition filed before the Supreme Court. A political analyst believes President Duterte's record high satisfaction rating shows his uniqueness compared to post-Marcos era presidents. And Johnny the Flying A Abarientos leads Alaska in routing San Miguel Beermen in the thrilling finale of the UNTV Cup PBA Legends Face-Off. Good evening. Malacanang believes the House Speakership term sharing will not affect the Duterte administration's legislative agenda. Rosalie Koz explains why. On July 22, the lawmakers in the upper and lower houses will vote for the leaders and officials of the 18th Congress. Ahead of this, seven members of the lower chamber manifested their intention to run as House Speaker, even threatening the breakup of political allies. But President Rodrigo Duterte, to save the unity of the alliance and avert its fragmentation, made a decision to endorse House leaders. President Duterte has stood firm his decision to endorse is not an interference with the legislative branch. It is up to the House of Representatives to decide whether or not they will follow the President's recommendation on the term sharing of House speakers, according to Malacanang. The palace is confident that once the president's proposal happens, the term sharing will not affect his administration's legislative agenda or the House committee hearings such as budget deliberations. No, nag-agree na nga yung tatlo. Sila nga ang magkakalaban na nag-agree. They forge into unity. So how can there be disruption? The president's allies in Congress have agreed on the House speakership in which Taguig Congressman Alan Peter Cayetano will be the speaker for the first 15 months. Then Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco will be the next speaker for the next 21 months, while Leyte Representative Martin Romualdez will be the majority floor leader. I think it's about time I talk. So your speaker will be Alan Peter Cayetano. Um, sharing Dito is he shares the term with uh, Lord Velasco and si Romualdez will be the majority floor leader. The palace believes it is President Duterte's idea to have the 15 to 21 months term sharing arrangement. Well, I can only guess na siyempre gusto nung either one of them, mauna. Yeah. Parang Solomonic nga yun eh. Una kita, pero 15 ka lang. Pero yung isa naman, pangalawa, 21 months naman. Oh, di ba? Mas marami. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. As the day of the House of Representatives will vote for their leaders' fast approaches, Congressman Martin Romualdez concedes from the House Speakership race. Grace Cassin tells us why. Later, Representative Martin Romualdez accepts the endorsement of President Rodrigo Duterte for Congressman Alan Peter Caetano and Lord Alan Velasco as House Speakers and for him to be the House Majority Floor Leader. Albay Representative Joey Salceda says that although Romualdez got 167 signatures from his fellow congressmen to win the House Speakership race, Romualdez has conceded and is now preparing for his work as the majority leader for three full years. Romualdez promises to support Congressman Caetano as a House Speaker. The unanimous decision is to follow the president. No ifs, no buts, no unless, no except. E. Martin is accepting the position of majority leader. Partilist Coalition, which consists of 54 partilist congressmen, expressed support for Congressman Caetano as well, but admits that their stand might change. Uh, for the 15 months, uh, for now, we <laughs> don't know what will happen. This is the first time that lower chamber will have two speakers with term sharing. 
As of this time, lawmakers can say the effect of term sharing beyond the House of Representatives, but they assure the lower chamber will not be a rubber stamp of the Duterte administration. We cannot be a stamping pad, especially with so many new fights there. And uh, mahirap yun. I think it is only the late strongman Marcos who can do that because of the situation. Davao City First District Representative Paulo Duterte and Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, who created the Duterte Coalition in the lower house, have no comment on President Duterte's endorsement. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. 80% of Filipinos say they are satisfied with President Duterte's performance according to the latest social weather survey. According to a political analyst, this only shows that the president's performance is unique compared with the job done by past presidents who served after the Marcos administration. Harlene Delgado will tell us why. As always, if you are satisfied, with my work, then I'm happy. If you are not satisfied, then I'll work more. Dagdagan ko yung pawis ko. This was the reaction of President Rodrigo Duterte on the latest survey results of the Social Weather Stations or SWS. The Social Weather Survey shows that 80% of Filipino adults are satisfied with the president's performance. This is a new personal record high net satisfaction rating of President Duterte with plus 68, two points higher than the previous record of plus 66 in March this year and in June 2017. According to Professor Professor Ramon Casiple, Executive Director of the Institute for Political and Electoral Reform, the survey results shows that the President's performance is unique as compared with the job done by Philippine Presidents after the Marcos regime. He says the performance of a President usually declines in the middle of the term. For Casiple, some of the manifestations of the president's strong political will include the closure of Boracay for rehabilitation and the anti-illegal drug campaign. Yun yung unique sa kanya yung political will. Hindi ko sinasabing walang political will yung iba, pero hindi umabot sa point na nagkaroon ng major changes sa buhay ng mga tao. In fact, yan yung dahilan bakit uh, 80%. Matamang, ito yung nakadama ng uh, impact sa buhay nila. Casiple believes that despite the controversy sounding the president, his supporters tend to ignore criticisms against his administration as they downplay them as opposition ploys. Ang opposition ang gumawa ng controversy. Uh, from the start, hindi sa binigyan ng what we call the political honeymoon. Yung usual na binibigay sa presidente before. Kandidato pa siya, inaway na siya kaagad. Casiple adds the results of the survey were 12% of Filipino adults said they are dissatisfied, while 9% are undecided, also shows that democracy is working in the country. The analyst also hopes that the satisfaction result will reflect in the president's fourth State of the Nation address or SONA on July 22. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. President Rodrigo Duterte reveals he will explain why it is not against the law to Chinese fishing in the exclusive economic zone. Meanwhile, the president proposes to the United States of America to post their seventh fleet in the West Philippine Sea. Rosalie Cos tells us why. The Filipino people may expect President Rodrigo Duterte to lecture on the West Philippine Sea maritime dispute during his fourth State of the Nation address on July 22. The president says he will explain publicly why it is not against the Philippine Constitution to allow China to fish in our exclusive economic zone or EEZ. Maybe Sasona, I will educate people. Na yung ginawa ko, sige, salita mo na ganyan, then I will uh, talk. By any stretch of imagination, hindi ang constitution nila yung ginawa ko. As a matter of fact, it was in keeping with the law. On this, Malacanang says the president will not defend his foreign policy but will give a talk on the constitution not only for public consumption but also for his critics. He will not defend. He will educate people who think that 
what he did was unconstitutional. He will lecture on the constitutionality of what he has done. The chief executive has been hit by his critics who say it is an impeachable offense to let China enter the Philippine EEZ based on a provision of the Philippine Constitution. The state shall protect the nation's marine wealth in its archipelagic waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone and reserve its use and enjoyment exclusively to Filipino citizens. But President Duterte stands firm that his agreement with China is constitutional. On another note, the President proposes to the United States of America to place their 7th fleet in the West Philippine Sea to kick out China from the disputed territory. The 7th fleet is considered the largest U.S. Navy forward deployed fleets. Kaya, I, kaya ako, I, I have a proposal. Kung gusto talaga ng Amerika na paalisin yung China, hindi ko man kaya, magkakaya ako tulong sa kanya. I want the whole fleet of the seventh, the seventh fleet of the armed forces of the United States there. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Some senators expressed their doubt the proposed constitutional change would still proceed in 18th Congress. This after President Rodrigo Duterte has stated his eagerness to push for cha-cha within his term. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Lawmakers in the upper house of Congress remain uncertain if the move to amend or revise the Philippines' 1987 constitution will push through in the 18th Congress. This is despite the statement of President Rodrigo Duterte on his eagerness to push for charter change. According to Senator Franklin Drillon, it's difficult to predict how the senators will vote for the proposed amendments. He points out that Senate is independent of Malacanang. The senator adds he senses that some of his co-lawmakers intend to run in the 2022 presidential race and may not support any amendment which may lead to federalism. Liberal Party President Senator Francis Pangilinan is unsure if he will remain as the chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Amendments. He says it will now depend on the majority bloc and the unfolding of events what with the new composition of the Senate. Senator Ralph Rectal wants to look at the details of the charter change proposal first. For Senator Panfilo Lacson, the passage of Chacha has complications. Yung bili ni Presidente na i-amend yung charter, hindi naman ganun kasimple rin. No? It is more complicated than uh, we think. Uh, lalo na hindi pa naman talaga na-resolve. Kailan i-clarify mo na ambiguity do sa provision ng Constitution yung papano boboto manner of voting but neophyte senator francis tolentino believes that the proposed change of the form of government may proceed during the third term tapos na yung preparatory work ng concom eh, yung ginawa ni former chief justice puno it, it was commissioned by uh, the executive branch ni napadala na silang uh, report at yung nasa infancy stage na yung kanoonahang version nito yung sa Bangsamoro so hindi pa siguro huli ang lahat The proposed cha-cha is slightly progressed in the House of Representatives during 17th Congress while the same is pending in Senate until the end of the previous Congress Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City The Pure Foods team upsets Ginebra the battle for third place. Meanwhile, Alaska goes home with the UNTV Cup of Season PBA Legends Face-Off Trophy. Victor Cosare will tell us why. Pure Foods toppled crowd favorite Ginebra San Miguel at the UNTV Cup PBA Legends off-season battle for third last night at the Big Dome 9875. The hot dogs came to the fight with no win from the preliminary matches and surprised their rival with their caliber. Roger Yap, Alvin Patrimonio, Tony Boy Espinosa, Glenn Capascio, Dwight Lago, and Jericho Deniera contributed double digits for the victors. While Bennett Palad, Mike Orquillas, and Baal David made a combined score of 41 points for Ginebra. Congratulations to everybody and siyempre giving back to the fans din to. Natutuwa sa mga sa fans kasi grabe yung cheer nila sa amin. Congratulations for you know, the UNTV 
for making this uh, uh, event possible. So we were very, very thankful. Hindi lang doon sa mga legends na naglalaro. Hindi sa uh, yung purpose nito to help, you know, the legends. Aside from the win, for all the fans, eh, you know, uh, makabalik man lang kami sa kanila kahit yung maliit na you know, kasayahan na ibalik namin sa kanila. Mas malaking ano sa amin yun. Sana tuloy-tuloy pa at ma marami pang gantong event. Thank you and all the best. More power, Kuya Daniel, and sa UNTV. And in the championship match, It seemed to be a revenge rematch last night for Alaska and San Miguel. Last February, the two sides met at the UNTV Cup Return of the Rivals benefit game where San Miguel defeated Alaska. But during the PBA Legends off-season finals game last night, Alaska was hailed the champion after winning by two points over SMB 77-75. It was a remarkably thrilling play-by-play -play on the hardwood. San Miguel finished off the first quarter with a two-point lead 21-19. But Willie Miller was on fire during the second quarter to lead his side with a three-point advantage, 37-34, as the first half ended. But San Miguel recovered and was on the advantage in the last seconds of the third quarter, 60-52. But it was Alaska's offense and defense that prevailed down to the last seconds of the neck-and-neck -neck ball game to record a win. Believe it or not, Yung intensity ng nasa dulo, it felt like the 90s again. So it was like going back in time. And for the times that we were here 20 years ago, 25 years ago, the feeling was the same, although a bit slower, but the competition was there, the intensity was there. Kahit na alam natin charity game, lahat naman may pride pagdating sa basketball. Eh. Nakakatuwa lang na marami pa rin sumusuporta sa PB Legend. Alam mo, sa totoo lang, na-miss ko rin talaga eh. The last... Time I played, siguro 2008. Ito talaga yung uh, ano ng player eh. Yung pride eh. Diba? Although, medyo wala kami doon sa, play, sa players, pero up to the last na uh, oras, talaga laban pa rin. PBA fans both at the Big Dome and online enjoyed the action-packed games. Even former PBA import Sean Chambers watched the finals match and congratulated his former colleagues for the victory. UNTV Cup donates 2 million pesos to the PBA Legends Foundation who aims to extend assistance to their fellow former PBA players who are in need. Among the future plans of the PBA Legends Foundation is a sequel of their return in 2020 for the PBA Legends Return of the Rivals 2, God willing. Victor Rosare, UNTV News and Rescue. The PBA Legends Foundation hope for more projects as the first UNTV Cup off-season PBA Legends face-off comes to a close. Meanwhile, the former PBA stars recognize Mr. Public Service, Kuya Daniel Rason. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Basketball is more than just a ball game. The ball. The hoop. The players. The game comes with fame, but what comes next after retiring as a pro? Sa pesapi bi naman after ng karir mo as a professional basketball player, wala ka na, de ba? Wala namang yatawag at retirement benefit. Wala wala yun sa sa professional basketball. So pag nakasakit ka, kung wala kang naipon, wala kang insurance, saan ka papunta? With the aim to help one another and to give back to the people who love and root for them. The PBA Legends Foundation continue to fight on the hardwood with their eyes on the advocacy of doing good. And as the first ever UNTV Cup off-season PBA Legends face-off ends, Alaska receives 1 million peso prize for being hailed the champion last night. First runner-up team San Miguel wins half a million pesos Third placer Pure Foods gets 300,000 pesos, while Hinebra claims 200,000 pesos. With the success of the month-long pocket tournament, the former PBA stars are grateful for the advent of the league. Otang na loob natin yan sa UNTB, kung hindi dahil sa UNTB, hindi naman mangyari ito. At hindi maging tagumpay, magtagumpay ang PBA Legends Foundation kung wala ang UNTB. 
I'm so amazed and blessed no, na maging part pa rin ako na to. Hanggat kaya namin tumakbo, susuporta kami dun sa mga players na in-need. Thank you again so very much sa lahat mo na tumuporta. The PBA Legends Foundation recognized Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon for his support to the advocacy championed by the professional basketball players of the country who entertained the Filipinos in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Kuya Daniel, a basketball enthusiast himself, has been instrumental in the creation of the foundation down to the various charity games the group holds. Well, sa atin, ano, mahalaga ang bawat pagkakataon na makatulong, regardless kung sino yung tinutulungan. Ang sa atin kasi, bawat pagkakataon na makatulong tayo sa ating mga kapwa-tao na nangangailangan, is a, an opportunity na bigay ng Panginoon sa atin para makagawa tayo ng dapat nating uh, gawin. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And that was the report from Asher Kadapan Jr. The Philippine National Police launches a new internal cleansing program. The PNP chief says this is more personal and more intimate. April Senadoza explains why. The Philippine National Police or PNP launched today a new internal cleansing program in a bid to crack down on airing cops. PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalda says the program will have a restorative approach among their ranks. You have a squad leader that will teach you uh, and guide you parang uh, sa military ito. Merong uh, pinakamalit na unit is the squad. Kaya ito parang uh, squad concept. So this is more personal, more intimate. The squad group will be divided into six to eight members to be headed by a squad leader. The families of police officers will also be part of the program. An internal cleansing committee will be formed to ensure the program's implementation. Based on PNP's data, over 2,400 police officers with various administrative cases have been dismissed from their posts while 422 police officers have been fired due to involvement in drug-related cases. Cops who have gone viral on social media for hurting minors, sleeping while on duty, drinking alcohol in public places, gambling and other unlawful practices are also included in the program. It can be noted, nine police officers from Manila Police District Station 11 have been dismissed for collecting money from vendors. Napakaraming source of kotong activities dyan sa, sa city of Manila. Uh, meron kasing uh, information na yung police paggabi, pinapabayaan bumalik yung mga pinaalis ng umaga. The National Capital Region will pilot the program, which is expected to become effective in other regions as well. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. International and human rights lawyers Amal Clooney and Kaolifion Gallagher will lead the international legal team of Rappler CEO Maria Ressa. Clooney, in a statement, says she accepted Ressa's case because of the journalist's courage, saying Ressa is being persecuted just for reporting news and for standing against human rights abuses. The lawyer also vows their team will use any legal remedies to fight for Ressa's right and defend press freedom and the rule of law. The veteran journalist thanks Clooney and her team in the face of supposed violation of her rights and the organization she represents. Ressa is facing tax evasion, cyber libel, and securities fraud cases before several courts. Clooney and Gallagher will be joined by international lawyers Kan Yeginsu and Catherine O'Byrne, Byron and other legal counsels from the United States. They will coordinate with Ressa's lawyers in Manila. Solicitor General Jose Calida claims 19 fishermen from Zambales and Palawan deny knowledge of the writ of Kalikasan petition for the West Philippine Sea. Maya Bermudez will tell us why. Submitting 19 new affidavits, Solicitor General Jose Calida claims 19 fishermen from Palawan and Zambales deny knowledge on the petition seeking to protect the West Philippine Sea. Calida's camp presented during the second oral arguments at the Supreme Court a video of three fishermen 
who talked to a legal officer from Naval Forces Palawan, showing how they reversed their statements. Pertinent portion of the affidavit of Robert uh, Asciado, the president of the Palawan Fisher Folks, reads, and I quote, Wala kaming alam dito at di namin suportado ang inihaing petisyon. Another Fisher Folk, uh, Mr. Abogado, said that, and I quote, isang malaking panlilin lang at paggamit lamang sa aming asosasyon. The affidavit of Labandelo of Zambales Fisher Folk reads, and I quote, Pinapatunayan namin na wala kaming kinalaman sa naturang petisyon laban sa anumang ahensya ng gobyerno, unquote. Kalida says out of the 37 petitioners, 13 did not sign their affidavits while 24 signed but do not have identification and 19 recanted their statements. I am bothered by your new submissions and uh, how many affidavits are these? There are 19 uh, affiance, Your Honor. 19 affiance and how many uh, petitioners are there? How many petitioners in all, if I may know? There are named uh, 37 petitioners, but 13 did not sign. 24 signed, but no IDs and details. And those who recanted uh, are 19, Fiance, Your Honor. Okay. Captain Anathalia Angare, the legal officer of Naval Forces West Palawan, who interviewed the fishermen, was also present during the oral arguments. Due to new allegations by the country's top lawyer, the Supreme Court suspended their oral arguments. But Kalida claims the game is now over. The, the parties, petitioners and respondents agreed that the uh, case be dismissed by the Supreme Court. But SC spokesperson attorney Brian Keith Hosaka in a statement says the court cannot confirm what transpired during the conference and what was agreed upon by both parties. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Filipino scientists are now examining organisms they gathered during an expedition in the West Philippine Sea. They also call for the protection of this part of the seas. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Filipino scientists have returned from the two-week-long expedition to the West Philippine Sea. Chief Scientist Dr. Leo Florence Onda of the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute reveals they have at least a year to test the specimen and organism samples from the area. The project is funded by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in cooperation with the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. On the noted the significance of the West Philippine Sea, especially in the cultivation of marine resources, being the center of the world's biodiversity. It also serves as breeding ground for various species of fish that migrate to nearby oceans, particularly in the western part of Luzon. Yung mga itlog ng isda, ng corals, pati maliliit na isda, ina, ina, tina, dinadala ng anod. Mula sa West Philippine Sea, aano rin yung mga yan, papunta ng west coast ng Luzon at saka west coast ng Palawan. Ngayon, yung mga maliliit na isda at saka mga itlog na yon, pag dumaong na sila o nakarating sila ng west coast ng Palawan, dun sila lumalaki. So yung nakikinabang talaga sa mga itlog na nanggagaling sa West Philippine Sea ay ang West Palawan at West Luzon. During the expedition, the team noticed damaged corals which are possibly the result of illegal fishing. Such practice must stop, they argued, because corals serve as the natural habitat for breeding fish. Kasi ang, ang concept kasi nun, yung isang coral, dun mga itlog yung isda. Lalang yun siya papunta sa kabilang coral reef, dun siya lalaki. Tapos doon naman siya mangingitlog. So, meron kang pinagmumulan, meron kang pinupuntahan. Kung yung pinagmumulan mo nawala, ano mangyayari doon sa mga populasyon na pupunta doon sa kabilang reef? Mawawala din. Dr. Onda's team say local fishermen lament a smaller catch than what they used to have in the past. Tapos sabi ko, manong aniliit naman ng lapu-lapu? Sabi nila, sir, matagal na kaming wala na kukuha o nahuhuling malalaking lapu-lapu dito. The expedition team also hoped to find organisms in the West Philippine Sea that can be used as ingredients in making new medicines that could help cure certain diseases like cancer. Sa pag-aaral, ay pwedeng pagmula ng mga bagong gamot, gamot uh, painkillers, 
pwedeng gamot sa cancer. Yung mga bacteria na makikita mo na nasa sponge o nasa coral, sa MSI nakita namin na pwede silang i-exploit din para sa antibacterial activity bilang isang antibiotic or bilang isang anti-cancer. Dr. Onda notes that the increase in number of nations fishing in the area is an indication that the West Philippine Sea is rich in marine resources. The UP Marine Science Institute is encouraging neighboring countries to protect the area because the impact will be huge if the area is exploited. Ultimately, the group said nations benefiting from the resources in the West Philippine Sea will be the ones to suffer. Pag nagpakawala ka daw ng isang itlog sa West Philippine Sea at titingnan mo yung galaw ng dagat, yung itlog na yon ay pwedeng or mga itlog na yon ay pwedeng madeposito sa China, sa Vietnam, sa Thailand, sa Malaysia, sa Indonesia, sa Brunei, sa Pilipinas. Break it ayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board admits that their lack of personnel is one of the reasons for the slow processing of franchise application for Transport Network Vehicle Service or TNBS. Joanna Nano tells us why. Hundreds of drivers and operators of Transport Network Vehicle Service or TNVS attended the dialogue today with the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB officials. They raised various concerns and complaints over the alleged slow and tedious processing of their franchise applications. Prior to today's dialogue, LTFRB Director for Technical Division Joel Bolano has presented the list of requirements and processing for the application of provisional authority and certificate of public convenience. The LTFRB admit they have a problem with their budget so they have not able to acquire additional manpower resulting in a slower processing of TNVS franchise applications. The lack of budget, they say, is due to the delay in the passage of the 2019 National Budget in Congress. Just for everybody to know, na yung pong naging dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon kami ng shortcomings, at admittedly, because of the 50%, and yan po ang aming admin division, ako po sa technical division, I have 52 JOs, at naiwan ho sa akin as of today, 24 JOs na lang po. The LTFRB again clarified, there is nothing new with the process and the requirements. To solve the issues, the LTFRB decided to extend the period of franchise application processing. From the previous two days, they are planning to make it three to four days to fast track the process. They will also set hearings even on weekends twice a month. On the other hand, the drivers and operators also appeal to the board the removal of bank confirmity as one of the requirements in franchise applications. LTFRB chairman vows to bring this up with the banks, but he insists that it will be very hard for them to decide on this since the banks really have to know if vehicles being loaned from them are used for public transportation. I hope you'll understand na itong uh, requirement na ito, sa banko talaga ito, no? We don't have... We don't have regulatory powers over the bank to compel them. We simply have to appeal to them, compare them, however way that we can appeal to them. Now, uh, there's a way by which we'll be able to either ease the requirement or uh, lessen the cost for getting that bank conformity po. John Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is worried about the effect of a new motorcycle ban on Osmeña Highway on the traffic situation in nearby areas. While some motorists are not in favor of the new advisory because they will need to travel further just to get to Makati or Pasay. Monokson will tell us why. Newly posted traffic advisory say that motorcycles with sub 400cc engines will no longer be allowed to use Osmeña Highway beginning July 22 from Silas Bridge in Pasay City to Buendia Avenue in Makati. The said regulation will be implemented by Skyway Corporation, which manages the South Luzon Expressway or SLEX and the Skyway. This move is to lessen accidents that may involve motorcycles. Skyway Corporation has the jurisdiction on Asmania Highway. That is why they have the right to implement such regulations. But for some motorcycle riders, this is a problem because they will need to travel farther just to get to Makati or Pasay. Uh, para sa akin, medyo mahirap yun sa mga motorista, kagaya namin. 
kasi walang ibang daanan na mas mabilis papuntang Pasay to Manila kundi dito sa Suminya Highway po. Sasalubungin namin ang traffic mula Terminal 3 hanggang Pasay kasi hindi pa kami dumadaan dito, matraffic na. Lalo na kung mabawasan dito sa Osmeña Highway, hindi na kami makadaan. Lalong lalayo kami, lalayo, lalayo kami umikot pabalik. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is now worried because this will definitely have an effect on the traffic situation around Osmeña Highway. The MMDA clarify they have no jurisdiction in most of the parts of Osmeña Highway, which is owned by the Skyway Corporation. But the agency points out that Skyway should have communicated with them so that they can find ways to address the effects of the implementation of the sub-400cc ban. Traffic situation may worsen, especially in areas where motorcycles will be diverted. Yung information, mm -hmm. ilan mga apekto ang sasakyan, mm -hmm. uh, ano yung mangyayari doon sa ire-route na kalsa, sa papag-re-routean, mm -hmm. how many volume are you expecting to receive, wala naman kami ganun, mm -hmm. natanggap sa kanila. Mm -hmm. So ang gusto lang nila, isarado, then so be it. The Motorcycle Rights Foundation is now preparing to schedule a meeting with Skyway and the MMDA to resolve the issue concerning motorcycle riders. On Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Department of Health calls on legislators for the enforcement of a mandatory immunization program to prevent outbreaks of diseases in the country. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Department of Health or DOH believes the public can be more protected against diseases if every Filipino gets immunized. The DOH says this can be done through mandatory immunization. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III explains that should a mandatory immunization program gets implemented, vaccines prove to be effective like vaccines that fight measles, polio, diphtheria, tuberculosis, and human papillomavirus or HPV will be given to the public. This is the reason why the Health Department Department calls on the legislators to pass a law which will benefit the public's health. I think we can push for that, but uh, it like most and like like most other pieces of legislation, mm. this has to undergo broad and deep public consultations. Valenzuela Representative Wes Gachalian also believes it is important to have the mandatory immunization implemented to prevent disease outbreaks in the country. It's a separate legislation. Hindi ito pwedeng isingit na lang sa IRR. Isang bagay na hindi na lang natin pwedeng ipasok lang sa bibig ng mga magulang for them to accept, no? Meanwhile, the DOH continues to visit public schools to administer vaccines that fight different diseases. This morning, the DOH went to Apolonia Rafael Elementary School in Valenzuela City. Some parents say they used to be scared to have their children vaccinated due to issues that surrounded the Vaxia vaccine. Pangalawa, ma'am, yung ding Vaxia kasi bago, hindi sinala. Ito yung mga dati na ma'am, kailangan din nilang maitake sa katawan nila for safety din at saka... Ano rin mam sa kanila protection para sa anak ko. Ito sa ano rin to eh, parang sa laban sa sakit. Kaya okay lang sa akin. Huwag matakot kasi para sa mga anak din naman natin yun eh. The DOH reminds the public to patronize vaccines which have been proven effective to prevent disease outbreaks in the country. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Valenzuela City. The on-ground auditions for Wishcovery Season 3 in Iloilo begins today. Singer-songwriters from all over the province surprise the crowd with their performances. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. As the rave on social media increases for the Ilonggo Lake auditions of Wishcovery Season 3, Ilonggo wishers and singer-songwriters came to SMC the Iloilo today to see the Wish bus up close. Aspiring independent singer-composers auditioned at the Wish Covering Originals booth for a chance to be Wish Covered and share to the world their heartfelt compositions. Just like solo singer-songwriter Daryl, who has always dreamed to be on the Wish Bus. It was exciting and uh, I was happy because it's my dream to uh, share my uh, songs to other people to encourage. That's why I'm so excited that my Wish Bus pala na audition. 
in the group Reigns Band share the same aspiration as they wish to inspire others through their original songs. Siyempre masaya dahil uh, yung pangarap namin bas, nasakyan na namin ako, thankful as lang talagang blessed kami dahil siyempre ano, uh, minsan lang po ito, uh, oh, hihirang po, hihirang lang po yung mga tao na uh, pasok dito sa bus and uh, anong time na talagang na, na panood namin at nakita namin sa vision wish na may audition, talagang impulsivate talaga kami para lang kasi lahat naman ng tao gusto pinangarap na sumakay dyan at pumanta dyan so talagang, uh, ano, talagang masaya. Varied band are also elated as their original composition gets heard by Elongo Wishes through the FM station on wheels. Bale, yung inspiration lang po kasi namin sumulat na kanta is parang nahihirapan kasi kami mag-usap mag, ano, mag sa mga tao. So, the only way para ma-express namin yung emotion namin, yung, nadamda, yung naramdaman namin is um, through our songs. Tapos, ang gusto lang namin is marinig ng mga tayo mga kanta namin and if ever, sana ma-inspire din sila sa mga kanta namin. I wish, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong wish bus na binigyan kami ng chance na mapatugtog yung original song namin at yung mga iba pang artista dito sa Iligino City. Wish Cabaret Season 3 Originals is open to all Filipino singer-songwriters, solos, duos, or bands. The Ilonggo leg of the Wish Cabaret Season 3 auditions will be at SM City Iloilo until Thursday, July 11, 2019. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Iloilo. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are other top stories. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam says the effort to amend an extradition bill is dead, but it wasn't clear if the legislation was being withdrawn as protesters have demanded. Amiel Pascual will tell us why. Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam said on Tuesday the extradition bill that sparked the territory's biggest political crisis in decades was dead, admitting that the government's work on the bill had been a total failure. The bill which would have allowed people in Hong Kong to be sent to mainland China to face trial sparked huge and at times violent street protests and plunged the former British colony into turmoil. Now, first of all, the cause of all these um, uh, grievances and confrontations is an exercise to amend the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance. I have almost immediately put a stop to the amendment exercise, but there are still lingering doubts about the government's sincerity or worries whether the government will restart the process in the Legislative Council. So I reiterate here there is no such plan. The bill is dead. Lam also said that she fully understands that the responses of the government may not have met the wishes of the people, especially the protesters, who have gone on the street several times to express their views. I just want to reiterate that this is, not, this is nothing to do with my own pride or arrogance. This is the government's full deliberations of the various concerns and factors and come to the conclusion that the responses are what are practical measures for us to move ahead. Lam's declaration appeared to be a win for opponents of the bill, but it was not immediately clear if it would be enough to satisfy them. Demonstrators have also called for Lam to resign for an independent investigations into police actions against protesters and for the government to abandon the description of a violent protest on June 12 as a riot. In mid-June, Lam responded to huge protests by suspending the bill, but that move failed to mollify critics who continued to demonstrate against the bill and call for Lam's resignation. Hong Kong was returned to China from Britain in 1997. Amiel Pascual, UNTV News and Rescue. Indian authorities have released a video showing the final moments of a team of climbers whose bodies were recovered in the Himalayas. Meanwhile, heavy rain has caused flood emergencies throughout the Washington, D.C. area. Rosalie Koss explains why. In the USA. 
A DC metro area resident shared a video of water pouring through the ceiling at Virginia Square GMU Metro Station on Monday morning. Driving rains flooded parts of Washington, D.C., shattering a daily record in just an hour, forcing 15 swift water rescues from stranded cars and causing an undeniable leak in the White House. Even more rainfall was recorded further northwest in Arlington, Virginia. Torrents of water streamed through the ceiling of metro stations and major arteries, serving Washington's top museums. And memorials shut down due to high water as local emergency personnel reported rescuing several people from cars. Meanwhile, Californians near the epicenter of Friday night 7.1 magnitude earthquake are staying cautious about more quakes as aftershocks continued in the following two days. Friday's earthquake was the largest to occur in California in nearly 20 years. This comes as the Golden State had seen a 6.4 magnitude 1 on Thursday. At the epicenter of the 7.1 magnitude earthquake, Seattle's Valley cracks can be seen on surface of freeways. An earthquake shelter was established in the city of Ridgecrest, 40 kilometers from Trona, following the first earthquake. Although Californians are no strangers to earthquakes, many are still anxious over the two strong shakes and choose to sleep in the shelter or inside their own vehicles at night. In India, the final moments of eight international climbers feared swept away in an avalanche in May was released by India's Indo-Tibetan border police on Monday. The clip shows four Britons, two Americans, an Australian, and an Indian slowly making their way up an unnamed peak in sunny weather, officials said. The group was attempting to climb India's second highest peak, Nanda Devi, when contact was lost on 26th of May. Seven bodies were recovered, but Britain Martin Moran remains missing. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the world. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Kath de Maraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. NBA All-Star player Paul Gasol surprises the world. Meanwhile, teenage tennis prodigy Coco Gauff ends her Wimbledon debut journey. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. In tennis, David Dauphin is really happy to be in the last eight for the first time. Tennis prodigy Coco Gauff falls to Simona Halep, ending her remarkable Wimbledon debut journey. The three greats Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, and Roger Federer advance to the quarterfinals. And in the NBA, as trades and transfers continue, Kevin Durant will wear jersey number 7 with Brooklyn Nets. Ricky Rubio is really excited with a big challenge joining the Phoenix Suns. Meanwhile, Paul Gasol surprises the world with the sound of wedding bells as he marries Kat McDonald, a former USC cheerleader. And speaking of basketball, a sport that fosters camaraderie and good deed, this young basketball enthusiast gives a fellow baller new sneakers and new socks to match when he sees the other playing without shoes. The boy from Dominican Republic was so thrilled, he ran upstairs and showed them to his mother. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News & Rescue. They say a dog is a man's best friend, but for many people living with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, the demands of caring for a dog or pet can be a challenge. But a new robotic puppy being developed in California aims to change all of that by providing companionship and unconditional love for those who are unable to look after a real animal on their own. Tombot is a lifelike robotic yellow Labrador puppy that responds to touch and voice commands and even wags its tail. It is powered with rechargeable batteries. In order to achieve its realistic movements and responses, Tombot is loaded with touch sensors and motors that give the robot an expansive range of motion. It can also be personalized and programmed to respond to its own unique name. Tombot will be available early next year and retail for approximately 450 US dollars. It is already a hit with senior citizens.
And those are the reasons behind the news July 9, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. They forged into unity. So how can there be disruption? I will educate people. Na yung ginawa ko, si salita mo na ganyan, then I will talk. By any stretch of imagination, hindi ang konstitusyon nila yung ginawa mo. The parties, petitioners, and respondents agreed that the case be dismissed by the Supreme Court. I'm so amazed and blessed no, na maging part pa rin ako na ito. Hanggat kaya namin tumakbo, susuport na kami dun sa mga players na in need. Thank you again so very much sa iyo, lahat mo na sumuport na. Utang na loob natin yan sa UNTV, kung hindi dahil sa UNTV, hindi naman manyari ito. At hindi maging, maging tagumpay, no? magtagumpay ang PB Legends Foundation kung wala ang UNTV. Sa atin, ano, mahalaga ang bawat pagkakataon na makatulong, regardless kung sino yung tinutulungan. Ang sa atin kasi, bawat pagkakataon na makatulong tayo sa ating mga kapwa-tao na nangangailangan, is a, an opportunity na bigay ng Panginoon sa atin para makagawa tayo ng dapat nating uh, gawin.